All right, folks, I know what you're thinking. Oh, look here, this hair looks like me. No, it's not. No, it's not. And I'm gonna prove it with examples. See, like you, I was also unaware that I had other options. It was like you build a computer, you install Windows. But a few months ago, I made a video exploring why people don't use Linux. And everyone in the comments was like, you're not gonna believe how good Linux has gotten. So I was like, all right then, thinking I'm gonna be disappointed. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. This is crazy. It's like I've discovered something forbidden. But anyways, today I'm gonna show you with proof the best operating system for gaming. Okay, so I used to be a Windows Glazer, and I will still glaze XP in 7. But let's just be honest, Microsoft has had a rough few years. People are not big fans of Windows 11, and by people I mean me. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks beautiful and all, and as you all know, it's what's on the outside that matters. But Windows 11 is filled with a lot of bloat. Literally, Seth and Adele's out here spying on your every move. He probably knows what kind of p watch. Not saying that I have anything to hide, but sometimes Windows 11 really do be violating your privacy. And honestly, but my privacy, I don't really give a shit. You can leak my shirtless photos, it's fine, I look good. But the problem is, this spying is slowing your computer down. Microsoft is spending so much time sending your data and selling you bloat that it's dropping your FPS. Windows 10 doesn't really have any of these issues, but Microsoft does have the mentality of, if it ain't broke, then break it. Windows 10's biggest enemy is Windows, because if they weren't ending support in October, we wouldn't be out here chatting about alternatives. If Microsoft played ball, I wouldn't know Linux, and Valve wouldn't be out here glazing Linux. But alas, we must sail to find greener pastures. Alright, so if Linux is the best operating system, what are we here for? I am so glad you asked. Linux is not an operating system, it's a kernel. Now what is a kernel? I'm not gonna explain because I don't really know what it is either. All I know that it's a base off of which we have different operating systems like Ubuntu, Fedora, or whatever. Usually we call them different distros of Linux, but each distro can have vastly different performance. And Linux, by definition, is not Windows, which sucks for us because most games are Windows based. Well, let me introduce you to our lord and savior, Gabe Newell, and his golden invention, Steam. Now then a bit to not be a slave to Microsoft, to spend a lot of time and energy translating Windows apps to Linux. They didn't do it out of the kindness of their heart, they want money. Mostly so the Steam Deck doesn't have to run Windows. So Valve built Proton, which is a handy little tool to translate. It's like Windows and Linux speak different languages, so Valve built Google Translate to translate. And this translation works shockingly well, and it runs on any Linux distro. So what is the best Linux for gaming is the question we want to answer, because we already know that Linux is better. For this, we're going to benchmark three games, Red Dead Redemption 2, Cyberpunk 2077, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We picked Red Dead Redemption 2 because it runs through Vulkan, which is cross-platform. Cyberpunk is DirectX exclusive, so it's pretty much purpose-built for Windows. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which has a Windows version and a native Linux version, and is the only one out of the three which is actually native to Linux. And as for Linux distros, I can't even count how many I tested. Let me read off the list. Ubuntu, Bazai, CatchyOS, Nobara, Garuda, Manjaro, PopOS, and Linux Mint. And then I also benchmarked Windows 10 and 11. Okay, so what are the specs of my machine? Our gaming rig consists of an Intel Core i7-4960X from 2013, which I know is old, but let me tell you, if you had this back in the day, you was ballin'. 16 gigs of RAM and a SATA SSD. So it ain't a high-end PC by any means, but I think it's the perfect use case. This computer does not support Windows 11 because of the TPM bullshit. So how did I install Windows 11? It's shockingly easy to bypass the requirements. But as we'll see, bypass the requirements is not really a great idea for performance, making this the ideal Linux candidate. So what about the graphics card? I originally built this with a Titan X from 2015, which wasn't random, that was the fastest Vista GPU. However, this GPU is sh**. It won't do anything more than 1080p. It's 2025, and I don't think you should tolerate anything below 4K. You deserve it, king. So I looked for a newer GPU and I settled for this AMD Radeon 6700 XT. AMD has the mid-range tied down and apparently it plays nicer with Linux. I also snagged the cheapest 4K monitor I could find and I think we're ready to benchmark. Okay, so let's start off with Ubuntu, which on Red Dead Redemption 2 did an average of 42 FPS. Not bad as you can see, but it's clearly not the best because Windows 10 takes the cake. Also, let me just clarify that Windows 11 is hella slow on this PC. All the downloads took like 6 hours instead of 30 minutes, so another factor to consider. Let's go to Cyberpunk 2077, which again did an average of 42 FPS, which beat everyone. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which did 59 FPS, again taking the crown. Alright, so that was the most obvious option, but how much better can we do with Linux Distro's purpose built for gaming? So next up is Nobara. It was a pretty user-friendly setup, installing Steam wasn't too difficult, but the mouse stopped working sometimes. But overall, 9 out of 10 for ease of use. In Red Dead Redemption 2, we did 43.5 FPS, which still couldn't beat Windows 10. Cyberpunk did 44.86 FPS, which again is the highest, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider did 63 FPS. Alright, moving on to Bazite, which is an OS built to turn your PC into a console. Like, from the moment you boot up, it's pretty clear that you're supposed to navigate with a controller. It's just too bad that it didn't work with my controller, so points doc for that. The installation process isn't too complicated, but downloading the correct ISO might be. Anyways, in Red Dead 2, we did 42.2 FPS. That's... 
Okay, but it's not the best though. Cyberpunk did 45.5 FPS, which I think is the best we've seen so far, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider did 58 FPS. Next up is CatchOS, which was by far the most complicated to install. Not only is picking the UI confusing as hell, but it didn't come with any kind of app store from which I could install Steam. I had to install it through the terminal, which I don't know if a non-tech savvy user would bother with this shit. But we got the highest FPS on Red Dead 2 so far, and shockingly close to Windows 10. Cyberpunk also performed extremely well, with 44.6 FPS, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the best performing of the three, with 63 FPS. Next up is Gerudo. This one is, uh, is not my favorite. Like, the installation was mostly fine, but when it came to installing Steam, it wasn't smooth and hella confusing. It hanged like three times, and when it did install, downloads were extremely slow, like Windows 11. Also, Steam kept crashing and reopening every few minutes. But when it comes to performance, Red Dead 2 did 42.7 FPS, which is alright, I guess, but not the best we've seen so far. Cyberpunk did 43 FPS, and Tomb Raider did 60 FPS. Now, Manjaro wasn't exactly a better story. Installation was fine, but Red Dead 2 did an average of 42.5 FPS, which sounds okay, but it didn't feel that way. Same goes for Cyberpunk 2077, which said 42.6 FPS, but it was hella choppy. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider did 59 FPS. Also, like Windows 11, Garuda downloads were hella slow. Next up is Pop! OS, which had a pretty friendly UI, and the installation process was okay, I guess. But even if it did 42.1 FPS in Red Dead 2, it felt choppy. Same goes for Cyberpunk, which did an average of 42.2 FPS, but it still didn't feel smooth. And finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider did an average of 63 FPS. And alas, Linux Mint, which was by far the worst example of choppiness, because even if it did 41.8 FPS on Red Dead 2, it felt more like 20. Cyberpunk did an average of 42.3 FPS, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider did an average of 60 FPS. Okay, so who is the winner? Well, I'm glad to announce the winner is... Catch US by FPS. Alright, it might have gotten the most FPS, but I don't think it would be my personal pick, and I don't think I can just pick one winner. First off, Windows 11 performed abysmally, like goddamn. I told you I wasn't lying when I said I doubled my FPS. Look at this performance. Also, Windows 11 downloaded everything so slowly, like oh my god. Catch US had the best performance, but it was the hardest to use. However, if you care strictly about maximum frames, that is your best bet. I think another strong candidate is Nobara. The performance difference was next to negligible, and it was very easy to use. Bazite is also a strong contender, especially if you want to use your PC as a gaming console. It's as close to SteamOS as you're gonna get, because you can't get real SteamOS without a bunch of weird requirements. I did not have a great time with Garuda. It was very slow and unstable. I have a hunch that it might not be up to date. Same goes for Manjaro and Linux Mint. I understand that I didn't customize the OS or whatever, so your results may vary. Also, the usual disclaimer is no online gaming. If you try it, not only will it not work, you can get banned. Also, you may have noticed that I tested a lot more games in the last video, because games like GTA 5 and Forza Horizon did not perform well. GTA 5 probably does perform alright, but the tweaking it took just made me give up. So there's still some gaping problems, and Linux is not at fault. If developers were to fix this anti-cheat nonsense, Linux would be the clear choice. My goal here is just to shine a light on Linux, because I don't think people know how good it is, and maybe if enough people start using it, not only will more software be compatible, but Microsoft might up their game. But if this video either gets 10k likes or a million views, I know, hyper ambitious, I will build a baller gaming PC just to test Linux on it. So like and subscribe!